Hello everybody, my name is uh, Catherine Alsing and this project is being submitted to Kimberly Georgia's Section 9 Structure and Function of the Human Body at Rasmussen College. The disease I chose is acute intermittent porphyria. The etiology of acute intermittent porphyria. Acute intermittent porphyria is the most common type of porphyria, most prevalent in European countries like Sweden, United Kingdom, etc. So if you're um, of European descent, you have a higher probability expressing acute emitting porphyria. It is autosomal dominant. It is unknown why the defective gene becomes symptomatic for AIP. Exact number unknown, but it affects roughly around 1 in 500 to 1 in 50,000. It manifests after puberty, mostly for females than males, due to um, the hormones. Uh, certain lifestyle choices may cause the person with this defective gene to experience acute intermittent porphyria. So to avoid episodes, affected should follow a healthy diet, refrain from fasting, and avoid any drugs that lead to the increased activity in hepatic P450 system. Affected cells, tissues, organs, and organ systems. AIP is a ge genetic enzyme defect. Is, is from a genetic enzyme defect. The deficient enzyme is porphobilinogen deaminate. De also known as the hydroxymethylbiline synthesis, which is HMB synthesis or HMBS. The HMBS gene or the infected gene causes the excess amount of porphyrin precursors in the body. It affects mainly the liver, nerves, and muscles. And it affects the hepatic system, the nervous system, causing neuropathy. Gastric system induces vomiting and uh, the brain, which has caused behavioral changes, disorientation, delusions, depression, and paranoia. Signs and symptoms are during episodes. Uh, these signs and symptoms include, are the episodes start with abdominal pain, constipation, or diarrhea. Uh, constant nausea and vomiting, muscle weakness and cramps, there's peripheral neuropathy which causes numbness and or tingling, rapid heart rate is one with tach like tachycardia, uh, high blood pressure, behavioral changes such as paranoia, depression, delusions, um, seizures and, which can lead to coma, and the damage to nerves, the damage of the nerves to muscles. Most of these signs and symptoms are experienced, but not always all of them. Treatments for AIP, um, because acute intermittent porphyria only manifests during episodes. Treatment is mostly um, preventative measures for these episodes. So to prevent them, those affected with this gene should avoid alcohol, drugs that affect liver functions, excess stress, and fasting. If a person experiences an episode, the person should be hospitalized, given IV fluids, and given intravenous hematin. Sometimes hospitals do not have hematin. So um, people who have an episode should tell the um, should tell the hospital when they're admitted or at least have uh, a written something written down in their personal belongings that tells the nurses or doctors what they have and how to and how it's treated 
so that they have time to order it. Uh, for me, they would hospitalize me, give me IV fluids and dilated, and then after a while, they'll try and after 48 to 72 hours, they'll try normal foods. It, they must get normal foods down in at least a week. An episode can last hours to days, and it varies from person to person. If the person is not treated, the episode can last for much longer, months, years. Short term, short term and long term consequences. The short term consequences are what the episodes cause, um, such as nausea and vomiting that doesn't resolve, mental problems like paranoia, depression, hospitalization, time off of work, seizures, tachycardia, urine retention, constipation or diarrhea, temporary neuropathy, and hyponatremia. Long-term consequences usually happen for those who do not seek treatment. And this is hypertension, kidney damage or failure, liver cancer, which is also known as hepatocellular carcinoma, there's paralysis or coma, peripheral neuropathy that does not stop, and then mental disorders, depression, paranoia, etc. Um, the long-term causes can eventually lead to death. And these are my resources. Thank you for listening and learning about acute intermittent porphyria.